How's it going everyone? JakeXVX here, back on Forza Horizon 4 once again. Every now and then I'm sure all of you know I like to do videos talking about the future of Forza Horizon 4 and obviously other Forza titles as well. What I haven't actually done yet is a video solely based on my actual predictions for the future of Forza Horizon 4. And because the second expansion's announcement is probably just around the corner, I think we could see the announcement of what it is within the next month or so. In this video, I'm going to give my predicted and educated guesses for what DLC cars we'll be seeing, what DLC features we'll be seeing, what expansion packs we'll be seeing, and stuff like that in Forza Horizon 4. On screen right now, you'll see the basic four things that I'm going to touch on, and basically just tell you exactly what I think is going to happen. Number one for DLC vehicles. Now DLC vehicles is a touchy topic, however I've got a list of cars that I think has a high chance of being added to the game and for very good reasons and I also have a list of cars I don't think will be added at least anytime soon. Cars I think have a high chance of being added to the game in the future as DLC vehicles or exclusive vehicles I should call them one of them which is the Bugatti Divo, if that's how you pronounce it anyway. The reason I think this could be added is because it's basically just a Bugatti Chiron with an upgraded body and stuff like that. There's not many differences and this makes it very easy for Playground Games to add it into the game because they don't need any proof of how fast it is or anything. They just need to kind of remodel it and stuff like that. And it's a highly requested car. So I think it's actually possible that we could see this new Bugatti at some point in the game. Next up the Apollo IE. Now I don't know too much about this car but I know that it's also a very highly requested car. It's been out for a while, I'm not sure if it's done an official top speed run yet to prove how fast it can go but it's quite a lot of videos out there of it just it being driven and as long as Playground Games have a vague idea of okay that's how fast the Apollo IE is I think we could honestly possibly see it. The Hurricane Performante. Now honestly I will be extremely surprised if we don't receive this car at some point into the game. The amount of people requesting this is insane. We've been given the Gallardo Performante, so Hurricane Performante, I will be very surprised if that's not coming at some point. Along with the Aventador SVJ as well, although it's quite a newish car, it's quite similar to the Aventador S and the Aventador Standards. Uh, I'd be very surprised if we don't get the Aventador SVJ as well. And then there's other little bits and bobs like the Alpine A110 or however you'd say that and the Nissan GTR Nismo for example. Cars like that which, you know, no one really sees coming. We get that quite often. We get quite a lot of good DLC cars come that no one really predicted would come. And I think we could get stuff like that, like the Alpine or the Nissan GTR. There's no way I'd predict all the low end cars that come because they add the most bizarre stuff but for the high end supercars and hypercars I think I think those are some pretty good ones. Now some cars which I don't think will be added at least anytime soon. Number one the McLaren Speedtail. Number two the Koenigsegg Jesko. Number three the Hennessy Venom F5 and number four the McLaren 600 LT. I know, lots of these, well all of those cars would be amazing in Forza Horizon 4, but the trouble with these is there is definitely no proof that these cars will go as fast as they say. Think of the Hennessy Venom F5, people say that that will do 300 miles an hour, and do you know it probably does, but if Playground Games add the Hennessy Venom F5 into the game and let it do 300 miles an hour, Bugatti and Koenigsegg may not be very happy, because they would just say, hey, the Hennessy haven't proved that the car will do this, why have you done that? But if the Hennessy and Venom F5 gets added and doesn't do 300 miles an hour, Hennessy will complain. So you see my point. We're going to have to wait for an official top speed run or something, just like the Koenigsegg Aguera RS had and then was added straight after. We'll have to wait for something like that for this to even have a chance of being added. The Speedtail, um, the Koenigsegg and the F5 all fall into that category. So honestly, guys, if you're looking forward to these cars being added, don't expect it anytime soon because I don't think it's happening. But that's the general idea of DLC cars. There's not many DLC or exclusive new cars that you can guess because quite a lot of them are random that no one thought of ever. But the odd one is an obvious supercar that everyone's been asking for and I gave you the ones that I thought might be added. Educated guesses because they're just highly requested and I also told you which ones not to expect anytime soon just because of the facts that I gave you. 
On to topic two, I want to take a little bit of a prediction and a guess at some of the new features or new updates we're going to see in the future. As for issues in Forza Horizon 4, there isn't that many if you think about it. There's the issues of war riding, that's a big thing. Progression is a bit of an issue as well, sometimes it's too easy and too hard, it's a bit in the middle at the moment. And online connectivity, there's quite a lot of connection issues, but other than that, connection issues, progression and war riding for example, it's not really that much wrong is there? And we know eventually they're going to fix war riding, and we know that they're trying to tackle progression with the festival playlist, and eventually someday they'll fix the connectivity issues. Other than that, I think they can kind of mainly focus on new features, and here are some of the new features which I do think, because Forza Horizon 4 is going to last another year, maybe two, maybe even three nearly, I think we're going to get quite a lot of new features. And Here's what I think we may get. I think we may get some new additions to the Root Creator. Root Creator has been added and it's a big game changer for the Forza franchise and the only thing that it needs now is additions to it that allow you to place things on the map and there's no reason why we can't get that to be honest. It would make for some amazing maps, amazing tracks that are just so different and we won't be stuck to the just the standard Forza Horizon 4 map. So Root Creator additions, I'd be surprised if we don't get something like that because lots of people have asked for it more car customizations as well for example they're trying to tackle the the brake caliber painting and stuff like that they've recently added the advanced painting options more rims and stuff so they're slowly but surely tackling the car customization side of it they're adding some more stuff they're fixing stuff it's not too bad hopefully eventually they'll start to add some major car customization features which will be very nice but most of the stuff they're working on now feature wise is kind of rewriting how things work like they're rewriting the progression thing by adding the festival playlist making it harder to get these new cars instead of just adding new features so new features wise there's not really much to guess now for topic three and four which is kind of into one but that are the expansions and now if you look on screen, I'm going to give you quite a well-educated guess at what the next expansions upcoming up could be. Have a look at this. In Forza Horizon 1, we had a Rally expansion, which obviously Rally was kind of focused on Rally, Drift and Off-Roadiness. Forza Horizon 2, we had Fast and Furious expansion, which was kind of an on-road expansion. Um, and it was exciting. It was all fast stuff, fast cars, fast, you know, nitrous stuff. It was on-road and exciting, I'm going to call it. And then in Forza Horizon 2 as well we had the Storm Island expansion which was based on different weathers and it was very off-roady as well. Forza Horizon 3 we had Blizzard Mountain which was also weather and off-roady. It was one of our first experience in snow so that was a decent expansion in my opinion. Also in Forza Horizon 3 we had Hot Wheels which falls under the same category as Fast and Furious if you ask me. It was on-road and it was exciting, it was fast and it was just it fell over the exciting and fast category. Now, in Forza Horizon 4 we've had Fortune Island which is also kind of weather the focused on extreme weather and off-road and driftiness. Now if you follow the same path that you see on screen in theory we should get an on-road expansion of some sort that's fast and exciting because although we didn't in Horizon 1 in Horizon 2 and 3 they made up for having an on-road they made up for having an off-road kind of weather-based expansion by adding quite an insane on-road one. So for Expansion 2 in Forza Horizon 4, I'm personally predicting that it will have nothing to do with off-road, nothing to do with drifting, and that it will be something insane like Hot Wheels or the Fast and Furious expansion. Things that I've considered is that uh, maybe a Hoonigan expansion, a huge map, oh, my phone's vibrating, maybe a Hoonigan expansion that just has a massive map full of jumps, hoops, just stuff like that, like the GTA expansion that added hoops and whatever stuff in, in races. Hoonigan Island, loads of nice tracks, jumps, spins and everywhere and it would it would fit in the fast kind of category which is kind of what should be next in theory. I can't imagine they're going to do another off-road and weather based expansion, do you? I don't think so. So yeah, maybe a track expansion, um, Hoonigan expansion, stuff like that. I think we could see something along those lines. Now as for after that, topic 4 many of you will know that it's sort of confirmed that we're probably getting more than two expansions i've got a video or two on this already and i think that this will be completely different to the first and second expansion 
think if we're getting a third and fourth expansion, it'll be a lot more game-changing than just a different area or a different map, like Fortune Island technically is. My predictions are the bridges up at Edinburgh will have a significance to these expansions, not the second expansion, the third and fourth ones much later this year. Well, I'm not going to say fourth, but at least the third, possibly. I think it could be in significance to the Edinburgh bridges that are at the top of the map. Maybe the bridges will extend the map even further. That's what I think that the third one will be. Possibly a map extension, a separate island that you can drive to over the bridges. It could go to Ireland, we could have a brand new island map, it could go to the Scottish Highlands, something like that, some nice roads. Um, it could go, I don't know, it could go to Ireland and have the Isle of Man there and stuff like that. But for the third expansion type thing, I think it will be different to just a normal expansion that we've seen so far. Because Forza Horizon 4 has to last an extra year than usual, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a map expansion using those bridges up at the top. So that's what I think will happen for the, the third expansion. There's not much I can guess on, but it gives you a vague idea of what could possibly very likely happen. I think the words possibly and very likely could contradict each other, but whatever. So just to recap, for topic one for the cars, Hurricane Performante, Nissan Need GTR Nismo, the Alpine Aventador SVJ, Apollo IE, even the new Bugatti, all cars which I think do have a possibility of being added. For new features, I think once they've tackled the current kind of issues, I would say, they're going to start working on brand new stuff that are literal additions to the game that based on customizations and additions i think car customizations root creator additions stuff like that and for the expansion wise i think i think from now on we're going to see a lot less on off-road stuff and driftiness because i think there are a lot of people complaining about it and playground games have been known to kind of repeat themselves but not in the same game if, if you saw on screen earlier although there was a lot of off-road and weather-based expansions none of them happened twice in the same game it was always once per game and then there was one exciting expansion per game that we have yet to have seen i know not many people bother to look into the actual details of stuff like this so they just kind of pull predictions and guesses out of nowhere which is understandable but i like to know details i like to know that top speed runs and proof of car speeds are kind of necessary for them to add the cars into the game which is why i like to do videos like this to keep you all up to date and to let you know what can technically be added and what cannot technically be added at least anytime soon so for anyone wanting my actual predictions and guesses this is what i had but anyway guys leave a like if you've enjoyed let me know what your predictions are in the comment section below subscribe if you haven't already for more Fox horizon 4 content and i'll see you all later